Hi, and welcome to today's demo featuring our QuickBooks Online integration with our Starship application. To get started, we're going to focus on our sales invoice that we've created in the QuickBooks Online application. We also do work with sales receipts inside of QuickBooks Online. In the invoice itself, there are a few fields that we map into Starship to pull in all the information in seamlessly. The first is the ship to information um, will automatically be uh, moved into Starship along with your ship via on whatever carrier that you selected here will also be translated into Starship as well. We also pull in all the line items to uh, Starship. So your item uh, SKU, your description, along with the quantity, along with its values will also be pulled into Starship. The values are used for commercial invoice purposes for international shipping. Uh, and we also can store information such as N NMFC as well as class information if you're shipping LTL shipments um, for your um, particular items. So to go into Starship, uh, we basically would log in to the Starship application. And we would basically see when we log in, we will see basically all of the orders in for a particular day. So here you can see I have uh, looking at today's date. Um, but if I want to look at a date like say yesterday, for instance, I could easily filter on that and it would show me all of yesterday's orders waiting to be shipped. So you can filter on any one of these columns. Um, so we leave that option open to you as well. Uh, if your invoice or sales receipt is um, barcoded, you can use this field here to use a wedge type scanner to scan that uh, barcode in uh, and the order will load automatically for you. Or you can use our shortcut here um, with the little truck icon, you'd click and open up the um, order information from QuickBooks. So as I mentioned, all of that information for invoice 1085 has been pulled in. Um, we basically pulled in the ship via as mentioned and we default to your prepaid account. Uh, and then from there, <clears throat> We can also bill third party accounts um, if you have the account number established in QuickBooks Online um, or uh, also the third party ID established inside of Starship to map that accordingly. Um, over to the right is where we will pull in the ship to information or the ship to information. Uh, and here you could see that all the address information came in. Uh, we also do an address validation, checking for street address, zip code, along with residential versus commercial. Um, to make sure that those address correction fees are minimized or eliminated from your UPS or FedEx invoices. Um, down below, you'll see all the packaging and line item information. So if I drill into this here, you'll see that my items defaulted into my default box called the 10 anchor box. Starship does hold uh, a packaging database as well, where you can store all of your different box types, pallet types, um, and also uh, hold all the dimensions and weights for those particular um, package sizes. Um, you do have the ability to use our packing scenario if you wanted to, where you can define an item to a box. Um, maybe you have a specific quantity that can fit into a particular box that you want Starship to automatically create a certain number of boxes. We can do that for you as well, or you can simply drag items um, from one box to another. Um, so therefore the packing list when it prints will show your customer the right items that are in the right box. Um, in the line item view here, you have basically all the mappings from QuickBooks. So the item number, description, uh, the quantity that was uh, ordered uh, to the quantity that you're going to ship in case you need to back order something. You can do that in this field here where you may not have, say, an Aegis puck to be shipped. You can default this to zero and now only the two Lego sets are going to ship on this particular shipment. Um, this is also where we can store information if it was LTL, like your NMFC code, class information. If it was international related, we would have another international tab opened up here um, where we can store Schedule B, NAFTA information for Canada, shipments, things like that uh, for you as well. Down at the bottom, we show the total charges for this particular shipment. So here you'll see the list rates um, uh, that will be the published rate. Uh, the contracted rate is the rate that you're going to pay the carrier. And then we have something called the applied rate, which is what's going to be put back in the QuickBooks Online. Uh, this is where we could take advantage of our freight rules uh, in case you have like a specific markup per customer, maybe a, over a certain value or under a certain value uh, that you want to assess. Here I have a 30% markup across the board. That's why this shows 1725. That's what I'm going to charge back to my uh, uh, customer when I write this back into my invoice. 
If you were curious to see what your other carriers on your license would charge you for shipping, this is the rate shop feature down below. You can simply click the shop all button here. Um, this will ping each API uh, and come back to you with your negotiated rates. So you could see if maybe in this case that FedEx was the least expensive option um, or not, and then you can make the change. So here you could say, you know, select this to all and then click on the contract to charge tab here, where basically would sort lowest to highest. And you can see right off the bat that my UPS ground rate is a little bit better. Uh, it's going to get there one day slower, but if I'm more curious, you know, and interested on saving some money, maybe I want to choose UPS in this situation, or even better, my post office rate is even uh, better than both of those combined. Again, one day slower, but if I was more interested in saving some money, I can simply click this button here, and now you'll notice up top, it automatically changed it over to my priority mail account, uh, and now I'm ready to go and print my priority mail label. In this case, I can either hit F3 or I can hit ship and process. And once I do that, uh, this will basically send a notification to the post office as well as print my label along with my pack list. This document that I'm on right now is called our smart label. It's a one option that you could use in the printing uh, settings uh, where this is an eight and a half by 11 label stock where you can print this is a four by six is a die cut that you can peel off. And the other half is your packing list. The packing list can be fully customized with logos, uh, specific information you want to show or maybe not show uh, on here as well, or you can turn the packing list off and use the packing list that's provided by QBO um, if, as well. Uh, you can also print these two both to a thermal printer or have one print to a thermal and one print to a laser printer. Uh, the options you know, are yours and whatever preference you prefer. Um, in QuickBooks Online, uh, when we go back into here in real time, once we refresh this order, um, you would see now basically the write back for the tracking has come back in. Um, here's the post office tracking number here. And then we also write back into the notes field down below the ship date um, along with the weight, uh, along with the service that was used in case you did change it like in this example. It's always going to show FedEx here. But to your customer service or sales team, it's going to show the appropriate service that was actually used at the time of shipping, along with its tracking number. The freight cost is put back into its freight field down here, um, the 1672. Uh, so now you can go ahead and invoice your customer, and you're um, completed the workflow here with Starship. So that concludes today's demonstration. We hope that uh, you find some value in our Starship application, and we look forward to uh, speaking with you soon. Take care.